Have you ever wanted to build a data-driven web application for your data science projects? But perhaps you might be intimidated by the difficulty of coding in Django or in Flask. If you answered one or all of the above, then you want to watch this video to the end because I'm going to show you how you could build a data-driven web application in just a few lines of code. And so without further ado, let's get started. So the name of the Python library that allows you to build a simple data-driven web application is called Streamlit. Actually, this Python library was brought to my attention by one of the subscribers of this YouTube channel. So please give a big hand to Iqbal for recommending this excellent Python library that will allow you to develop a simple data-driven web application for your data science project. And so the first thing that you want to do is head over to the Streamlit website by typing in streamlit.io. And so I'm going to provide you the link in the description of this video. So this is the website of Streamlit. And as you will see, it says that it is the fastest way to build a data application. And so here you can see that you could build a OpenCV web application from within Streamlit. And you could add a lot of interactive elements as well. So in order to get started, you want to install Streamlit. And so you could do that by typing in pip install Streamlit. And after the installation process is finished, you could type in Streamlit hello in order to check that it has successfully been installed. And as you can see here, a simple web application could be built in just a few lines of code. And you will see in this second example that you could also add widgets to the web application as well. And so this slider widget will allow you to select numbers just by sliding the slider bar. And in this third example here, you could deploy your web application easily using Git. And there you have it, a minimal framework for building a powerful web application while just requiring you just a few lines of code. And so here are some of the gallery of web application built using Streamlit. So let's have a look at the gallery. Okay, so this awesome web application using TensorFlow was built in Streamlit. And there are other awesome examples of Streamlit applications that were built by the user community. And so here are just a selection of these. So if you have built a web application using Streamlit, you could also share it via Twitter. And the Streamlit website will be showcasing your web application in this gallery page. So you can see here that a wide variety of web applications have been built using Streamlit. Okay, so now that we have a brief introduction about Streamlit, let's have a look at how we can build one for ourselves. Okay, so the first thing that you want to do is fire up your terminal. So if you're using a Microsoft Windows, you want to type in the search bar CMD. And then you will see a terminal prompt coming up. And in this terminal prompt, you want to type in pip install and then Streamlit and then hit enter. And since I have already installed Streamlit, so I'm gonna proceed with showing you how you can build the application. So I installed Streamlit inside the Conda environment. And so I wanna activate my environment by typing in Conda activate DP. All right, so I've created a Python file called myapp.py and the contents of the file is shown here. So you can see that it is approximately 20 lines of code. So if you deduct the empty spaces, then it should be less than 20 lines of code. And so aside from installing Streamlit, in this example, you also want to install Y Finance. So you could type in pip install Y Finance. Okay, and after you have done so, then you want to type the following lines of code in. But for your convenience, I'm going to share you the link to this file on the Data Professor GitHub. So you want to check in the description of this video and download this file. Okay, so the first three lines of code are just simply importing the Y Finance as YF, import Streamlit as ST, import Pandas as PD. And then this block of code, we're going to write the header of the web 
application. So as you will see here that this is in markdown language and with the hashtag here, it is indicating that this line is a heading type one. So it's going to be a big text and then it's going to be an ordinary text saying shown are the stock closing price and volume of Google. And then here, in this blocks of code, I've taken from the Towards Data Science article. So you want to check that article out and give this article a clap. And so I extracted some lines from this article. And so this line of code will be the ticker symbol of Google. And so it is G-O-O-G-L. And then in this line of code, we're going to take in the ticker symbol of Google. And so we're going to retrieve historical data of Google stock price with a period period set at one day and the starting date is May 31st 2010 with a ending date of May 31st 2020 and then we're going to save this into the ticker data frame and then the contents of this data frame will comprise of the following columns open high low close volume dividends and stock splits okay so in this web application we're going to show you two line chart and we're going to show the closing price and and also the volume okay and so this is a very simple web application and then you could customize this to your own liking so I'm going to show you that we could also edit the contents of the file and the web application will be serving the updated version in real time all right so let's type in cd desktop because this file is on the desktop and then I'm going to type in stream lit run and then the name of the application which is myapp.py enter and that's it okay so it's going to spawn up a web server and this is what you're going to see a simple stock price application okay so let me show you side by side the code and the application all right here so here the simple stock price app here is the heading and since it is one hashtag it means that it is having the heading one style h1 in html language but if we have two then it will be a bit smaller so let's save it and then it detects that the source file has changed and then we should select always rerun and then we should select always rerun and so it's going to update to be a bit smaller as you will see here and if i add additional hashtag and save it it will be even smaller okay so i'm going to change it back to one hashtag and so it's heading one let me try okay so let's maybe modify this a bit in markdown manner so closing price i'm gonna make it bold volume i'm gonna make it bold and in italic see so you could customize the style in markdown style so you want to refer to the markdown cheat sheets and i think this is a good one to refer to so the markdown cheat sheets by adam pritchard and it has everything that you would ever wanted to know about markdown all right so you could add cool stuff in here you could add lists unordered lists you could add links you could add images you could add tables okay like for example, let me copy this. And then I'm gonna just put it here. All right, so it's a table. Okay, very neat, right? Okay, but let's delete it for simplicity. So the ticker symbol is Google. So we can even customize the ticker symbol to be other values as well. So let's say AAPL for Apple save it and then this is the price for apple so i could update this like that okay as you can see it will update automatically to the website okay so this is the date range that are shown in this line chart and this is the actual line chart so if i wanted to delete one of them and then save it then only one will be shown okay and let's say that i want to write something in Okay, so I'm going to write here the heading one closing price, maybe make it heading two. All right, and I'm going to do the same for the volume. As 
you will see, this is the customized version. Okay, so if you zoom in, zoom out, you could even do that as well. This is a interactive chart. And if you want to zoom to the original version, you would just double click on it. Right, same thing here. Just double click on it. And it'll go to the original state. And so there you have it, a data-driven web application in just a few lines of code. And if you're finding value in this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't yet done so. And hit on the notification bell in order to be notified as soon as a new video has been released. And as always, the best way to learn data science is to do data science. And please enjoy the journey. Thank you for watching. Please like, subscribe, and share. And I'll see you in the next one. But in the meantime, please check out these videos.